scrutiny and speculation over the months-long absence of the Princess of Wales spurred the royals to release this video last week. In January, I underwent major abdominal surgery in London, and at the time, it was thought that my condition was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. Now, Kate Middleton has become the subject of a conspiracy theory that the New York Times says Russia helped fuel. According to the Times, a group of researchers at Cardiff University in Wales helped unfoil a Russian disinformation operation targeting the royal family. They tracked 45 social media accounts linked to the Kremlin, which had been posting bogus stories about Kate in the months that she was MIA. Now, this story, Jessica, I think is kind of funny. And look, I have no doubt that there were Russian accounts spreading nonsense about this, but like the biggest contributor to confusion and conspiracy theorizing about what was going on with Kate Middleton was the royal family itself for putting out an obviously doctored Photoshop photo that like that everyone could tell and then lying, just saying, oh, she was experimenting with Photoshop that was just utterly, absurdly false. That's why people uh, were wildly speculating. So it's very, it's very the New York Times and misinformation researchers to try to put this on Russia, which Yes, to be clear, Russia is often up to no good, not denying that. But, you know, to say that the, the main cause is like we're being, you know, puppeteered by, by Russian malfeasance, uh, it's, I don't know, it's 20, 2016 all over again. As if the public cannot recognize a simple pattern of behavior that the palace has around the women who are the heir to the throne. There was so much conversation around, is she getting diana Because they saw how the palace treated Diana. They've seen how the palace has treated Harry and Meghan. They see a pattern of behavior of them wanting to upkeep an image at any cost. And is cancer something damning to your image? No, no one's at fault for getting cancer. No one's impure or dirty or needs to be hidden because they have cancer. They should have done a press release saying maybe she's struggling with her health, but instead they left everyone wondering this public figure that has her entire existence paid for by the crown and their territory's tax dollars, people have a right to know where she is, what she's doing, they pay for her to live. So I don't think it's crazy that people were taking to conspiracy theories. I think people were having fun at the internet. And at the end of the day, is anyone really harmed by the speculation? No, I don't think this Russian disinformation has any real consequence. And I think you're absolutely right to say the only people to blame are the palace. Their PR could have handled this a lot better. It seems that they just really don't care about the royal family in the way that they should, the way that they allow all of these tabloids to run with stories instead of just putting out a simple statement for Kate's sake as well. Right. So exactly. So in this New York Times piece, they write, um, you know, so they're quoting this report or whatever. The influence campaign appeared calculated to inflame division, deepen a sense of chaos in society, and erode trust in institutions. In this case, the British royal family and the news media. Um, is, is eroding trust in institutions some kind of crime? I mean, sometimes institutions, like trust is being lost in institutions for legitimate reasons in some cases. I mean, if like, I, this is the New York Times saying that eroding trust in the news media is de facto bad. That seems very self-serving to begin with. Um, the British royal family has their trust has been eroded in it due to a variety of factors. Again, with this story specifically, because they put out, they produced misinformation about her condition with that ridiculously photoshopped image. Um, obviously, trust in the royal family. Uh, decreased precipitously after the uh, revelations about the involvement of the accusations against Prince Andrew having to do with Jeffrey Epstein. Look, there is, if people are losing trust, sometimes it's for good reason. It's not a, it's not a crime to, to question or be skeptical the way these researchers make it out to be. Very rich coming from the New York Times as well. The institution that ran cover for all of the covert operations in the 1980s saying that the Soviet Union has taken a hold in Latin America and then the CIA stages coups all across Latin and Central America. And then when we have finally declassified documents decades later, the New York Times is like, 
what could possibly cause the erosion of trust in our institutions? It's behavior precisely like the behavior the New York Times has exhibited over the last half of a century. And to look at the royal family and say, yes, like this is a monarchy that is worth believing in and trusting is a bit ridiculous at this point in time coming from the New York Times, which preaches that we need to have democracy abroad and, and criticizes any kind of autocratic rule, even if it's just, you know, not a real monarchy, but it's it's there as an institution for cultural significance. It doesn't make much sense that the New York Times is defending an institution like Buckingham Palace against Russia. What is their position here? Because if this was somewhere in Africa or Latin America, I don't think the New York Times would be like, oh, we need to defend the institution of monarchy there. They would be saying, this banana republic is caught in the past. How could they not have a democracy? And so it's it really falls along the lines of race in a lot of occasions, but along the lines also of what the largest powers are in the West, which, you know, the palace was for a very long time. And I think, quite frankly, it's outdated. And that's why we see this backlash. But that scares papers like The New York Times, the people who read them and the people who edit them. Right. I feel like so many people, including mostly just people who work at the New York Times, I guess, like constantly need a refresher on on what was what was actually demonstrated to have been true about the 2016 Russian interference on social media. Like, yes, absolutely. They the, the Kremlin had a bot farm where they had fake accounts um, on on Twitter, on Facebook, et cetera. Um, these accounts were seen by, this content was seen by a subset of a subset of a subset of users. It was not tailored or focused toward swing voters. It was not tailored toward people in swing states. There's no evidence that, you know, whatever the, the 10, 20,000, however many voters, it was, I think it was 60,000 voters across Michigan, Pennsylvania, who decided the 2016 election. No evidence it was tailored toward those people. In fact, those people were disproportionately white, working class, older voters who probably get most of their news, frankly, from TV and radio rather than Facebook. Um, the, the idea that, you know, the kind of Cam or Cambridge Analytica, the idea that they could precisely target the exact sort of voters to swing in the, from, from column A to column B, that all turned out to be not true whatsoever. Um, you know, some, of, some of the things, you know, being said as disinformation is just like another vantage point. Like it, it was, um, you know, criticism of, of Hillary Clinton for not winning over black people enough. Is it like disinformation to say that she hadn't done enough to cater to that community? Or is it maybe just an opinion? It was stuff like that over and over again. But the mainstream media just fell in love with this idea that this explains everything that went wrong in 2016. Absolutely. How elitist of them. Anyone who thinks different from me must not be basing their opinion on truth. Instead, they must be tricked. It's the same exact strategy that they were running, pushing a TikTok ban. No one would really ever be critical of Israel. It's just that there's communist propaganda from China on TikTok. But of course, people can look at the evidence and make up their own mind about how they feel about the Israel-Palestine war, they can make up their mind about how they feel about Buckingham Palace as well with real factual information that they found on American servers published by American scholars or journalists. It doesn't have to be misinformation or disinformation rather coming from Russia. And the fact that they use this as the excuse to make people afraid of the information they find online that runs contrary to the dominant narrative of the mainstream media and political establishment, that's scary. That's the kind of stuff people were afraid of when they were giving speeches about how communism was bad, that you don't want the media to be run and controlled by the government. But then we have our media controlled by a small group of elites. It sounds like exactly what we were told to be afraid of is happening now in America under a different name. Yeah, the answer to communist propaganda is to dispute it and have other voices point out why they think it's wrong, as I certainly do, not to empower more government actors to uh, exercise greater control over the ability to restrict the flow of information. We'll be back with more Rising right after this.